Today we are talking all about garlic and sourdough. Garlic is one of my favorite flavors of all time, but it is so tricky to figure out when it comes to making sourdough items with it because garlic and sourdough clash. Sourdough starter is full of microbes, mostly yeast and lactic acid bacteria, and garlic is full of antifungal and antibacterial properties, especially when you crush or chop it, compounds do compoundy things, and this compound called allicin is produced, and that is super antifungal, which really causes problems. Antifungus, we're relying on fungus to help our bread rise, you can see the problem. So, I wanted to do a little bit of experimenting on how different formats of garlic might impact fermentation. So we are going to make three mini loaves of sourdough bread. One will have garlic powder in it. One will have some raw minced garlic, which I suspect will have the worst effect because of that compound allicin that gets released. And then also a little bit of roasted garlic, which I think has the best flavor, but I'm still intrigued to see how they all compare in a time-lapse video. We can watch them rise and see, is there a lot of difference? Does one seem to outperform another? What about the flavor? We'll bake off our little mini loaves. Anyway, let's just get to it. So I'm going to make, actually I need a fourth jar. I'm gonna make four jars, one with each type of garlic and then a control with no garlic so we can see just how much garlic might slow down your fermentation. So let's start. My big flour bin down here, just got a 50 pound bag of Central Millings ABC flour, which I believe is the same or almost the same flour as the Costco all purpose Kirkland brand. I get asked about that one a lot, so I'm really excited to experiment with this one. I've already messed around with it a little bit and can tell it definitely needs a lot less water than other bread, bread flours I've worked with, but that's an easy adjustment. So, all right, we're gonna do 75 grams of flour and is that 48 grams of water. This is just my regular foolproof sourdough bread recipe, but it's scaled down to just 75 grams of flour. That's it. Um, for the salt, I'll actually do the starter. 18 grams of a peaked happy sourdough starter. And this one's gonna be a little tricky, but one and a half grams of salt. Okay, so basically when I see it go to one, I add just a teeny bit more. Thought about just using my hand, but what the heck, we'll just use a Danish dough whisk. Once the Danish dough whisk brings it together, I usually switch to my hands to kind of squeeze all the ingredients together and make sure that they're all getting incorporated. I need to wet my hands though, because this is sticking. So here's our control. Let's stick this in a jar. Okay, do the same thing. 48 grams of water, 18 grams of starter. Okay. And for this one, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. We're mixing in our garlic powder loaf. And in this one, I'm gonna do some roasted garlic. Roasted garlic is milder and sweeter, so you can typically add a lot more of this to whatever you're making than fresh or minced. But scaling down so much, it's kind of tricky to figure out just how much to use. So I was thinking one clove. Gosh, this smells heavenly. just falls apart. I could just eat roasted garlic. Okay, I'm gonna do one clove of roasted garlic and then we'll do half a clove of the fresh. I already know in any baking, you're probably not gonna catch me using anything that, other than roasted garlic because it just is so perfect, but I'm still intrigued. I wanna know what the difference might be, especially if you want a shortcut and don't have time to roast your garlic. Wonder how the others will, will do and how the flavor might be different. Okay. There is our roasted garlic. I usually use a garlic press, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna use this microplane and I'm gonna do about half 
of the clove. So there are our four jars. I'm going to come back in about 30 minutes and maybe just do some slap and folds, develop the dough a little bit, but I'm not gonna work it so much as regular bread. I really just wanna focus on the time lapse and I want you to get a true feel from beginning to end of what this dough looks like as it's rising. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up our little time lapse and we will come back afterward to discuss. Here it is, here's our little time lapse set up. I cannot wait. I'm literally so eager to see the result of this. I have wondered this for so long. I'm sure someone else has done this before, but I have not seen it, so. Woo. Before we deconstruct the whole time-lapse thing and get into what exactly happened here, I really wanna taste them and just see how different the garlic is. The fermentation on these and the baking of them is pretty subpar because they were rising in a tiny jar, they were hard to get out. Um, I don't know really how to open bake and I realized today that I put them in a container that you can't really get them out, it's a whole thing. Anyway, let's try them. So this is the control. Classic sourdough bread. This is the roasted garlic. I wish there was smell vision. It smells so good. It's a very sweet and mild garlic flavor. Just divine. Here is our garlic powder. This one tastes very acidic. It's a pretty strong garlic flavor, but it's less pleasant than the roasted. It's more it's more like smack you in the face. A little sour. Now we'll try the raw minced garlic, which was a total fail to be expected. Just horrible. It tastes completely off and it kind of tastes like you're biting into a garlic clove in the worst way. Roasted garlic is clearly the best here. I don't think that's any big surprise, but let's dive into what happened during the time lapse. So, now that you've seen the time-lapse video, let's break down what's going on here and why each jar behaved so very differently. You know, we often hear that garlic is this fantastic natural antifungal and antimicrobial. That's why people who really like holistic remedies will sometimes make fermented garlic or have you seen those big jars of garlic honey to help with like the cold? Egyptians actually fed garlic to the pyramid builders because they believed it gave them strength and endurance much needed if you ask me. But 
when we add garlic to our dough, that same antimicrobial power can really slow down fermentation, as you saw. It all comes down to this compound called allicin, which is formed when you crush or mince fresh garlic. It's actually not even present in garlic before you crush it, which I thought was fascinating. It's synthesized from allein by the enzyme allianase. Allison is super effective at keeping microbes in check, which is why the jar with freshly minced garlic took its very sweet time to rise. Now dried garlic, like garlic powder, does not form allicin in the same way because the drying process reduces those enzyme activities, so it slows fermentation a bit, but not quite as much as the fresh garlic as you saw. And roasted garlic, which is cooked, has even less of an effect because the cooking process you probably guessed it, breaks down the compounds that form allicin. That's why the roasted garlic dough ferments almost as well as our control with no garlic. You can definitely smell the difference too. Fresh raw garlic smells very strong and pungent. Garlic powder is a little bit milder and roasted garlic just smells sweet and it's pretty mild because it's been caramelized in the oven. All of that shows us how different forms of garlic change the actual chemistry of the dough. So let's get into the science a little bit. In terms of that science, researchers have actually tested garlic in petri dishes, which I love looking at um, with bacteria and fungi, and they measure zones of inhibition or areas where the microbes cannot grow because the garlic compounds are working against them. It's like a, it's cool. Check out these photos. I could look at these all day, I'm such a nerd. Anyway, fresh garlic that's crushed has the most allicin, followed by fresh garlic that's sliced. Thought that was cool. Garlic powder's next. Drying garlic causes a lot of changes to the alienase, but it can still convert allicin to allicin. And roasted garlic contains little to no allicin at all. So, if you're curious, I'll link the sources for all the sciencey stuff in the description so you can check them out in more detail. It's just another fascinating layer to me of how these different forms of garlic change the flavor and the fermentation process in our sourdough goodies. So, there you go. Happy baking.